that. Well, your, your competitive advantage, I think, is your story yeah. and how close you are to what's actually going on. You know, and people at the markets actually give a shit about that. So, you know, your, your average Joe at the pub doesn't, probably won't go to the bartender and be like, hey, can you tell me about the, uh, the background of Cedar Creek Cider? Yeah. No like, one does. Some will, but... And I've yeah, offered that. Most won't. Some of the places I've got in, I've said, look, I'd actually love to come <clears throat> and introduce your bar staff to Cedar Creek Cider. Because if they can have a direct conversation with their customer and say, this is Cedar Creek Cider, blah, 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 Nathan Tillum, <laughs> um, fourth generation, like this is a story. Therefore, the people that are buying that have a connection to the cider and just we will enjoy the cider more. I think that's a, a big deal. If someone can connect to the product, they're, they're going to want to drink it and they're going to have a better experience drinking it for sure. And even going back to when um, the cans exploded, that was something I noticed. People that knew me directly really weren't bothered by it. Like I might have had um, probably 20 cases refunded out of fucking nearly 300 um, that were probably should have been refunded um and yeah it came down to did the person know me or not and if they didn't they wanted their money back or to some extent wanted a refund which is fair which is totally fair i cop that on the chin yeah um yeah that's fucking very true it's it's but you're in a different like now okay there's personal relationships okay which is just you're trying to help each other become the best person that you can be which is that whole sitting who do you want sitting at your table type thing in a commercial point of view, but it's, it's a, okay, how can we benefit both parties? You know, someone's not going to take on your side unless they can see themselves getting an ROI on that or return on investment. And then the other thing is, okay, it's all well and good to sit at that meeting and be all happy Larry and be like, yes, we can do this. We can do, we can change the world together. If none of that, that gets put into action, that, that shit isn't forgotten. 100%. And so I don't, I don't know how your conversations went when you initially reached out to your suppliers, but I'm sure that it was, you know, let's let's put this into action. I'm not saying empty words here. No, you're right. Most, and it's funny, most of the people still, the, 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 the customers that I have, a lot of them, I haven't been the cheapest cider to buy by far. Like um, the people that the George sat me down and said, look, here's, here's what I'm paying for like another company. I'm a lot more expensive. Like it has to be. That's when I'm in this growing stage, it's not cheap to make it. And I hope I want to drop that price for everyone in time and I will. But like right now, yeah, my site is relatively expensive for um, pubs and stuff to buy. Um, yeah. But that relationship, the people that have taken me on, um, you can tell it's not directly ROI. They can see the value of having the product in a local community. Yep. Um, but once you get outside of this area, if they don't know me, that's a lot harder to do. And that's the key for you breaking out. But in reality, their, I mean, their strategy could be, a, it's a PR stint. Yeah. I mean, we're just, we're appeasing the, the mass right now. You know, everyone wants his cider on. Well, let's fucking put his cider on. Yeah. People asking for it helps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, But yeah, there's still a lot of companies that I need to approach and talk to and try and get in with.